make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. and talk with Freema. So tonight we have on a special guest, Prince Dykes. He is the founder of The Investor Show. So he's going to hopefully share some knowledge with us tonight. And for the ones that may not know too much about stocks and all that good stuff, hopefully we'll learn tonight. So without further ado, let's bring on Prince Dykes. Hi, my name is Wesley and I make investing easy and fun. What are stocks? Stocks are shares of ownership in a company. Companies sell stock to raise money to research, create new products, and hire employees. How it works? When you buy stock, you become a shareholder and own a share of the company. If the company's profits go up, your share in those company goes up. If the company's profits fall, so does the value of your stock. Stock prices can rise and fall every day. You make money if the stock becomes more valuable than the price you paid for it. How can you buy stock? You can buy stock from an online or face-to-face -face broker. That's all for now. Until the next video. Good luck! Hello, hello, hello! Hey, how you doing? How you doing? It's been a long time since I've seen a video. <laughs> It's like a throwback right there. So, so, Prince, tell us a little about yourself before I just, you know, go ahead and dive in so quickly. Uh, yeah, I ain't nobody special. I'm just a regular <laughs> guy with a couple ideas that do a couple things, you know. That's pretty much it. You get online and talk, you know, roll some color books, you know, pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> now I see we're in the um the flyer said author of four books. Yeah, that was a little misquote of my um, books. I have three books I have. I have uh, Wesley Learns to Invest. Wesley learns about credit and Wesley learns about insurance. So I have three books. Yep. There okay. will be four so actually, but a, you know, right now. Well, that's good. That's good. I didn't know that the first time that I met you, that it was, you know, that you were actually had multiple books out. I didn't know. I think I mentioned, or maybe you just said books, and I'll just assume one, but kudos to you. So, mm -hmm. with the good stuff, or like, what would you like to share with us when it comes to stocks for individuals that may not know too much about stocks? Like, how would you mm -hmm. give them information on to help them understand? Which that cartoon kind of helped, but wow. what more information can you give <laughs> us? Well, I look at it and I say, uh, we live in a world where we have an invisible tax going on, whether you know it or not. And that invisible tax is uh, inflation, you know, the price of goods and services going up every day. And I always love the use metaphor of like a can of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola Coca -Cola is one of those things that a can of Coca-Cola 20 years ago, it cost then and what it costs now. And we all on our grandparents or great grandparents and hear the stories of, oh, we used to buy a can of Coke for a nickel, you know, and now it's like a dollar twenty-five. So what caused those prices to go up? And just the price of goods and services, you know. Um, so every day, if you're not investing, you're essentially losing, even though nobody's coming to your account taking money, you're losing. So you have to form a way, whether it's real estate stocks or investing you have to invest and then what we just seen right now uh in the economical terms with the fed chair jerome powell he uh jerome powell the fed chair last march when the pandemic started to hit he put interest rates to all-time low low interest rates is bad for savers but great for investors and what i mean is with very low interest 
trades, less money you make off of savings accounts, less money, less money you make off of CDs, checking accounts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the interest rates are so low, they're not even keeping up with inflation. So if you're saving money, you're essentially losing money. So the only way you can grow or keep you got to think, well, how can I match or beat inflation? Because you rent a house or you rent a uh, apartment every year. And if you're leasing you that letter saying, oh, we're going $5 or $10, right. or whatever. So everything is going up around you. And you got to ask yourself, if I want to get out of this situation, I have to invest. There's no way, no way around it. So, so, so where does one go to actually start off to invest? Um, I always tell people to first um, ask yourself these three very big questions. One, what is um, what is your risk? Right, how much risk do you want? Is over? You a high risk person, low risk, medium risk. Second question, I probably got it back. You know, your time horizon. How much time do you have? Is this a twenty year venture, ten year venture, five year venture? One year venture. So once you know your time horizon, hey, you know, and I always tell people if you don't at least have about five a five year time horizon, you shouldn't look at stocks. They're very mm -hmm. volatile. Like who knew the pandemic was going to happen? Right. Right. And start shutting down stores. And before that, in two thousand eight, what happened in two thousand eight? Who knew the housing? Who knew the housing market was going to crash? Who knew in two thousand was going to be a dot com bomb? Who knew in eighty seven that we was going to have a glitch in computers and people was going to get scared? So, and going to the future, something else would happen. So, if you don't have at least a five year time horizon, I would say, well, stocks may may not be for you at this particular time. So, know your time horizon because the reason why your time horizon is very important because let's say last year you were retiring, you needed your money. If you needed your money last year, it was not a good time to sell and take out. You know, around that March, April. May time frame, but if you were someone who was new to investing, it was an opportunity to start investing. So I would first say, what is your time horizon? Then I would say, number two, what is the risk level? Number three, how much? Only have ten dollars a month, five dollars a month, or I have thousand, ten million, ten million. So those are the three major questions, basic foundation questions. Once you know those, start to look for assets. I'm sorry, I missed the last part. Oh, I said one of those three uh, topics, not the three topics. Once you know three, answer those three questions. Once you know your mm -hmm. time horizon, how much, how long do you want to hold an investment for? Then you know um, your risk level, your high risk, low risk, medium risk, and you know how much money you're looking to invest. Then you can shape how and where you want to start investing. So that'd be my first three basic questions I would ask everybody. OK, so I need to know exactly how long I want to be in an investment, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, um, how much mm -hmm. I'm willing to put out there and what it is mm -hmm. I want to invest in. Is that right? Or did I, I miss? I said one wrong. Your, <laughs> your risk level. How much risk are you willing to risk take? Are you very risky? Yeah, no, I'm not very risky Once, at all. So. <laughs> so if you're saying, hey, I'm I'm very conservative. I want to invest for five, you know, say if you're investing for, I have a 10 year old son or whatever, or I retire, I'm looking to retire in 10 years. I have 10 years, I'm low risk and I have $10,000. Then once you know those three questions then people can shape and say, Hey, look, since you're very low risk, some people like to invest in uh, um, section eight properties, section eight real estate properties, right? Hey, this is pretty low risk since it's funded by the government or whatever. Right. Or somebody say, Hey, I'm extremely risky. Then they may go in on a partnership with someone to purchase a franchise. Hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. um, someone in Chicago is opening up a 7-Eleven and they're looking for investors. You can put $10,000 there. This could be a potential payout. They're looking to build a company for five or six years to potentially sell it. Or you may know someone who is starting a new company. That's if you're, you know, once you know that risk level and how much money you have, um, and what's your risk level, how much money you have in your time horizon, then you either yourself or you can hire a professional to sit down with you and say, well, if this is the box I'm in, where can I go? And they usually will provide you a list of options of this is where you go. This is your risk level. This is what you can expect to return. You know, these are, you know, advantages, disadvantages and kind of go down that path. Okay. What do individuals, um, let's say individuals, um, I don't know if I want to say middle class, lower class, mm -hmm. um, 
what type of investments are they capable of doing? Well, right if now, if I'm asking the right question. <laughs> yes, you, you're 100 percent right. You know, you're looking at 20, 30 years ago, investing was only uh, put aside for the wealthy. You know, you had to be an accredited investor, had a network over a million dollars to get into a lot of investments. You had to have a stockbroker. If you're from a small town, how many small towns really had stockbrokers like that? And if you was a stockbroker, most stockbrokers wanted you to have a certain amount of money. So when you had to have a certain amount of money, broker fees, the accessibility wasn't there. A lot of lower middle class and lower class, they were kind of, uh, you know, stockbrokers. Wealth managers didn't even come to them. They wasn't, it wasn't even, a, the market wasn't even accessible to them, to them, right? But now you look in 2021 where everybody has a phone, everybody right. has the internet, everybody can log on to podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse, all these different things. You can get a plethora of knowledge. And now today with $1, you can buy potential, you can buy stocks because before the end of last year, Robinhood, one of the historic things that Robinhood app did was it got rid of fees. So before we had fees, you know, before I used to, when I started investing, it cost about 10 to $12 and that was considered to be cheap to buy a stock. It was 10 to $12 you had to spend for transaction fees. Now you're looking yeah. at now today where it's zero. So uh, now it's very accessible. People can invest into index funds, mutual funds. Um, they, they, you have, if you are living in the middle of, let's say, Georgia or Alabama, right? You can get online, and you may not have a financial advisor anywhere in your in, anywhere in your recent neighborhood or in your city, but you can get online and find anybody these days or anything and reach out, follow them, do your own research. So right now we have the most accessibility. The dangerous part I always tell people is in my dad's generation, who's 75, which more like a grandparent generation, in his generation, they suffer from a lack of knowledge. This generation sur uh, suffers from a lack of too much knowledge. It's mm. so much information, you become paralyzed. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. So I, I heard you mention the Robin Hood app. Is that right? Are, is, are there certain apps that people can go to to actually start investing to, to buy a share in a company? Yes. Um, the ones I like the, the you know, you know, this is not sponsored or anything, but the, the company I like the most is E Trade. So I like E Trade, followed by uh, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab. Um, you have Robin Hood, they're very popular because they kind of, it was like the first app that came out that was very, it was free, free trades. Mm -hmm. And I was like a game almost. <laughs> they, they made it like, it made it look like hit this buy button. You know, it was no analytics. It didn't do all the jargon that normal stocks do. Um, but mm -hmm. the downside to that is that it's so much of a game. It doesn't give you basic data as an investor that you should be able to look up. You know, if you want to compare companies, you can't do that on the Robinhood app. If you want to see financial reports, you cannot do that with Robinhood app. But it is cheap, easy. Anybody can get into it. And it looks like a little game. So I always mm -hmm. tell people in the world of investing, there's never a bad option. There's always good, better and best. So the, the simple fact that you are investing is always a good thing. So. That's the way I look right. at it. Okay. So you would suggest everyone, if you do have the opportunity to invest, basically in a nutshell, everyone should should be invested in something. So I look at it this way. The answer to that is yes. But my, my ideology is, uh, my theory on life is that everybody is working to become a philanthropist. Everybody's looking to give back eventually. First, you want right. just a job. Then once you get a job, I mean, my first ever job was Domino's Pizza. I just wanted a job to get school clothes, money and drive around and things like that. So first you just want a job. Then people want a good job. Then once they get the good job, they want to move up in that good job. Once they move up right. in that good job, then they're going to want their own company. Once they have their own company, they're going to want their own company to excel. Once their own company excels, they're just going to focus on giving back, a.k.a. philanthropists. So I, that's the, the, the evident flow of everybody. And how does that tie into finances is when you're just struggling every day, you're not going to be thinking about investing because you don't have food, clothes and things like that. But as you move up in the ladder of, of economics, where you start to do a little bit better and a little bit better, you're going to have no choice but to invest. Hey, I paid my bills. I have money left over. Uh, what do I do with this? 
Right. And so naturally, as you grow economically, you everybody's turning into investor, whether they realize it or not. You know, you're going to say, hey, well, I, OK, I paid my bills. I got this. You know, I got my house, my car. What else am I supposed to be doing? Then they're going to branch out to maybe stocks, real estate or business. Hands down. Right. Right. I agree. What 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 made you um, turn to, you know, learn so much about stocks and like what what brought you to this? Um, I was introduced into finances, being in the military. I was a logistic. I started as a storekeeper on submarines. So that was my introduction into finances, inventory, yeah, inventory control and things like that. And then I went from finances to inventory control, from inventory control to I just ended up getting my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, my MBA. Then, you know, going off and getting different licenses. I just took a took a liking to it. But that was my introduction. And uh, once I completed my MBA, I started to look and say, well, what can I do uh, to help? Um, you know, this is what I want to do one day when I retire, you know. And when I looked at it, that's what I started to focus on. And social media was the thing that pretty much uh, put me in the forefront. So um, I was on social. I came on social media, I think, for the first time in 2013. And um, I, I didn't know social media was going to become. It was almost like a game back then, almost. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't know it was going to become to what it is in 2021, but it did. And um, it ended up doing, you know, working out for me of putting out financial education and knowledge. Because when I started to learn these things, I thought that, man, I was behind. Nobody ever taught me. And when I started to, you know, ask my colleagues, they were just as shocked as I was. So when I found that out, I was just like, well, let me start putting this information out. So when I started to put that information out, that's when everything started to change. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Hello. Um, is that Fra Fabrioso? <laughs> Hi. And, um, uh -oh. mm -hmm. B3, <laughs> B32 said, how do I find my style of investing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Max. But uh, what's going on, Max? Uh, the question is, you must first know your, um, you find your style of investing. You know what I call it? The, you know, I put up a thing called the investing animal. Everybody is different. Everybody got different styles. You know, everybody just can't walk in and it's cookie cutter like, oh, you should have this. Some people try to do it by your age, but everybody's style is different. Um, I have some people that I work with that call me every day. Then I have some people who don't call me at all. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just everybody's style is different. So you have to sit down and learn this style. So how you find your style of investing, this would be my uh, thought process. First, look at your job, whatever your job of or level of expertise. If you're a housewife, most housewives do the shopping. They go to grocery stores. They do the shopping, things like that. Or maybe they may work. They may do a little part time job. Whatever that is, start there. I would say, hey, this is what I would do. And I, and I believe that over time, your style slowly finds you. You know, some people like the fast glitz and the glamour of day to day, where some people are long term. I want to put money here consistently over time. Some people have a bunch of money. They're just looking to park it somewhere to make some money. So that's the way I look at it. Mm, good comeback. So for the ones that may not know too much, do you have anything that you could show us? Any type of, okay. you know, literature or anything um, you could, <laughs> could give us? I will. I will say this, you know, I could uh let me see, let me see kind of share my screen. Let me let me open up something okay. here. Uh one of the things you I could do. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, one of the things we could do, now I don't mean to let me see. Uh, pull up Yahoo Finance. That's like one of my okay. go-to sources. I like Yahoo Finance because it's cheap and easy. Well, it's not even cheap. It's, it's free. Anybody can get to it, right? Um, let's say, let me see, can I share this? Okay, so this is Yahoo Finance, right? And with Yahoo Finance, you can, let me see, it's kind of a little sticky here. So right here, you can go to your streamers, right? 
So you can go to ETF future index screeners or whatever, right? So let's say if you went to an equity screener, this is how you find your stock, things like that, right? So you can go to your equity screener. This is where you're starting out. You're like, the world of investing seems so big, so massive or whatever. I will say one of the secret weapons, especially house moms have, is that the kids, the kids will tell you what the future will be. So if your kids love McDonald's, are they always asking for a certain toy or something like that? Make them investors into it. They love a certain video game, things like that. So for because the kids are the future. That's why you see so many movies doing so great today. So let's say for prime example, uh, what company, what region, country? So let's say if you're, you know, I know somebody's tuning in here from Brazil, right? So you have Brazil in here, you have China, Germany, Egypt. Denmark, Spain, all over the country. But let's say if you was doing United States, the next step is right here. Let's say market cap. Market cap could be market cap is market short for market capitalization. Small, uh, small cap, mid cap, large cap, mega cap. Mega cap are your biggest companies. Small cap are your smaller companies. Your smaller companies are very risky because a small company has the likelihood to go out of business. But the smaller companies also um, can experience more growth. Like for prime example, I have a 10 year old son. Um, if you look at us physically, he's probably going to grow more than me within the next five to 10 years, just height wise. The mega companies are pretty mature versus the small companies have a longer way to grow. So that's one way to think about it. Let's say if you're saying, I don't want to be, so if you're someone who's less riskier, which cap do you think you would go to Freema? Put on, <laughs> Freema on on spot. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm definitely, I want to be a less risky type of person. Okay. I'm not doing anything that's, well, Too it crazy. makes sense when you say they have, they have chance to grow, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not that chick. So, so, okay. So let's say if you say, I'm looking at a mega cap company, a big, I want already, I want a big right. company all right. So right here, this is estimated result. You have 211 with that. Next goes in, they will say um, price. You can put in a price. Let's say, hey, I only have, this is why I told you how much money you have is very important because right. you need to know, right? So no, let's, we're going to leave price open. You know what? Let's, let's put $300. Okay. So the next step is you see now we're down to 34 as a result. Now it's asking you what sector do you want to be in? Do you like basic material, financial, sus uh, financial services, Energy, technology, real estate, healthcare, industrial, communication services, customer service. <laughs> okay, communication services, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what you can pick more than one. But people say, "Well, Prince, what do you mean by uh, I don't? I'm not very well versed in communication services. I know what Verizon is and AT and T is, but am I very uh, well versed? Probably not. Now you're looking at inside of that industry. They're saying, "Hey." Uh, do you want to look at publishing, entertainment, electronic gaming, broadcasting, advertising agencies, internet? You know, I would anything? say gaming because my son, he's a gamer. So <laughs> okay, let's do electronic gaming, right? Let's see what we get here. Oh so God! Now, now this is telling you at the mega cap position. So now when I go back at the mega cap position, there's no communications, electronic gaming, right? So mm -hmm. now that means I may have to look at large cap. Let's go to large cap. So when I go to large cap, it's telling me there's one company there, right? Wow. Okay. So let's see who that company is. What's my result list? Okay, here we go. Fine. All right. Nintendo. Oh, right. Okay. I so boom, you have a company like Nintendo. So then you go in. I found this company, Nintendo. It's a large cap company. Um, now you're looking at, okay, I have this company like Nintendo. It's a large cap company. It's in communications. It's in gaming. Boom, now you found this company, Nintendo. Have you heard of Nintendo before? Of course. <laughs> okay. Mm. So most of your larger companies you're probably going to hear of. If we'd have done small cap, it'd probably been a small company. Maybe you never heard of. So now the things I like to look at, I can look at the P ratio to tell me, okay, is this company profitable? Previously closed means that the last day it closed, it was at $571. The market cap of this company, how big this is how the market cap is 69 billion, how big the company is. And market cap is uh, calculated from outstanding shares per plus share price. It opened at $590. 
the beta, the five year monthly beta is 0.79. This telling me how volatile it is compared to the stock market, the S&P 500. The P.E. ratio, this is my price to earnings. If positive P.E. ratio, I can look at that immediately and tell this company is is um, is profitable. The higher the number is, quote unquote, people are to say it's more overvalued versus the lower the number is, is saying that it could be potentially undervalued. Then you have your EPS earnings per share per share stock. How much did you earn from it? Right. So it doesn't have the earnings date. The volume is telling me how much how many stocks move in a particular day. So the next thing I do, I may look at their chart. So one of the things I love to do is when I look at the chart of a company, let's say we have a company like Nintendo. I thought we put our price tag at 300. I don't know why I brought this one up at 584. But okay. That's why I was thinking. I don't know why I brought this one up at 584. Maybe I typed it in wrong. Maybe I put in 3,000. Who knows? So um, so the first thing I look at so far year to date, I love to compare you to how are you doing compared to the rest of the potential the stock market, right? So let's say S and P 500. I will save it. I'll go to year to date. I can see right now it is underperforming. Mm-hmm. Nintendo so far this year is down 19%, right? So far this year. So then I will go back over a year. How have you, you know, how have you performed over the year? Which one? I don't like that color. Let me change this color. I want a solid line. Sometimes, you know, when they put light blue on top of blue, I'm like, that's crazy. I can't tell the difference. Let me put it in red. All right. So within the last year, it has underperformed the market. Let's look at the two-year chart. Where is the red line here? Where are you at? Why does it keep going away? I don't see it. Let me go back out and come back in and bring it back up. So let's go to S&P 500. And S&P 500, this is the top 500 companies in America. So I'm looking at you over the top 500 companies in America. So you have outperformed them over two years. Then I look at one year. You have outperformed them over a year. But you're down so far this year. But anyway, the whole technology industry is down. So when I look at, okay, you're down, you're a technology company. I kind of put you in technology. If you're down, mm-hmm. now I'm going to compare you to the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ itself has been down. I know it has been under the NASDAQ. So, yes, definitely it's under the NASDAQ. Then it's under, let's see, I'm pretty sure it's going to be under over the year. I hate when I do this again. Let me change the color of this thing because I can't see, tell the difference. I want to look at both of them. Has it outperformed it that much? No. All right. Oh, you know what? I think it's probably hadn't been on the market that long. Let's see how long has this thing been on the market. Let me exit out of this. Let me go to the max here. Okay, it goes back to 07. Now, let me add you on top of it. Change the color. All right. So this is uh, all the way back to 2007. You've seen the major stock market crash. So when I look at a particular company like this, hey, you're profitable. But compared to the overall market, it has been doing good over the last two years and over the last year but it has been underperforming the NASDAQ. So now what I will look at in Nintendo, right? Um, Let's go back. The next step I would do if I was in the the Nintendo space, where are we at? It may not be on this one, but let me look at his portfolio. Let's see here. So next thing I would do with uh, Nintendo is it's doing okay versus the stock market. Everybody knows technology is down so far this year, but let's go here to profile. And if you go to profile, this is going to give you a website who owns a company and everything like that. You okay. can go, this, this is the website. It tells you it's headquartered out of Japan. Um, it falls up under communications, electronic gaming and support, right? Now, since you were a large company, I would go back and now I will compare you to who else is there? What is your 
competition? You know, maybe um, it might be it, Sega or it could be a company I never heard of. Okay. Um, I don't know. I didn't hear you. I'm not a gamer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, but that was one of the things I would, but I could I could if I did a little bit more research, I could find out who probably is your competitor. You know, a one competitor could be possibly what's this company I like? Uh Activision. A T V I, I think that is. Okay, Activision. So very about that, that I do own Activision somewhere in my portfolio. So I don't want people to think that uh, hey, you know, he's promoting this stock. No. Please do your own research. So so I will so now I will look at you and I will go to charts. And what was Nintendo's um uh, and what I would do, I can't remember Nintendo's uh, symbol off the top of my head, but I would go to comparison and then I would name in Nintendo's stock symbol and I would see how would they look, how had they been performing on a technical side of the house. Now, that's the first thing on the technical side of the house. This is before you go into the finances. You go here to financials. And once you go into financials. I can see right here, they're telling me how much money they made in 2020, oh, how much money they made in 2019, how much money they made in 2018, how much money they made in 20, uh, 2017. This is all free. Now, if you want to go back 10 years, you mm -hmm. got to get Yahoo Finance Plus, right? So once you do this, um, now right here, this is the uh, income statement. This is telling me the total revenue, how much, what, you, what was their gross profits, how much money they spent on bills, operating expenses. And if I go here to the balance sheet, this tells me how much money they have in the bank, total assets, total liability, working capital. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a publicly traded company, that means it's open to the public. Now I can look here to your cash. I can look at your cash flow. How much cash flow? Are you cash flow positive? Are you cash flow negative? Is your cash flow growing or it disappearing? disappearing mm -hmm. investing cash flow where are you putting your money all those type of things so then i will look at that then i will compare the two and that's why i will look at um you know starting my way to narrow down and you can see nintendo is something that has never really been on my mind but you can see you know it's a company that how we found it by right. you know sitting here you no know, and once you know what you like and how much money you have and things like that you can say oh Boom. Okay. Boom. I found Nintendo. Well, let's look up. We found Nintendo. Who is Nintendo's competitor? Let's compare mm -hmm. Nintendo's competitor to whoever, you know, maybe it's Activision. Activision makes a bunch of games like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, things like that. Let's compare. Let's see which one looks the best. Activision was only $92 today. Nintendo was $570 something. Mm -hmm. Then I will yeah. compare the two to see. Who's stronger financially? Nobody cares about finances as long as the stock going up. People don't start to pay attention to finances until crap start to hit the fan. You know, right. people do that all the time. As long as the bills getting paid, they don't care how they getting paid. But once the lights get started, get turned off, that's when everybody, whoa, what's, what's going on? What's going on the lights? <laughs> so you would recommend or say it is a must um, that mm -hmm. you go back at least those seven years to see how things are going, or or you don't think they have to necessarily. Look back that far. I won't say uh, seven years, but I will at least say five years to present. I have, you know, because past performance, past performance is not a good indicator of future performance. But if you've never done something in the past, the likelihood you're going to do it in the future is pretty slim. Because if I look at your competition, if they're outperforming in the past and you're not, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not loyal to a stock or a company. It's just that, hey, I'm looking at who's going to make me money. It makes sense. That's it. Absolutely. If you're not producing, then, you know, no offense, but it's like, hey, I'm just going to move on to somebody else or something else. That's the way I look at it. That's true. Um, Alan said if someone wanted to sign up for somewhere to start investing with stocks, how would they do that? Is that through the Yahoo Finance that we just did or no, just this, kind of finding a company? That's just finding a company. That's any open okay. research that anybody can do. Um, I didn't pull up a particular company because some people... Like if I would have walked you through that and I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to have a TD Ameritrade or E-Trade. You'd be like, well, I don't have that login. That was thank you for being pretty useless, useful, useless. Right. So I want to do something that anybody can go on and log in. And, you know, that was no login. Anybody can go do that. Doesn't require a login. Now you're looking for somebody who's looking to buy stocks. If they're looking to do it online, you can go in and um, push to um, if you want to go in online. You got a couple companies like you got E Trade, right? Let me see. Can I share the screen again? 
I think you're probably diving right into that question um, that VLE asked. What stock apps do you recommend for beginners? Okay. So um, let's say if you went to E-Trade, right? Mm -hmm. You go to E-Trade. Um, this is like one of my favorite platforms that I like the most. Um, let's say if you didn't have an account, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's say you go here to open an account, open an account. So now that you go into opening an account, now it's going to ask you, hey, what type of account you want? A brokerage account, a bank account, or a retirement account? Because you can't open up retirement accounts. If you are self-employed, you can still have your own retirement account. So you go to a brokerage account, right? Okay. Now you have a brokerage account. You have individual brokerage account, a joint account is when you maybe you and your wife, husband, or whoever you want to have a joint account with two owners, or you can open up a custodian account. This is something you do for a child. So okay. if you have someone that's under 18, you can do that. You know, you're going to be the custodian for them. So once you have your individual account, um, let's say if I hit no, it's asking me if I already have an account. If you already have an account, they're going to li line them up together. So for okay. an example, you're going to go here to fill out, you know, pretty self-explanatory. What's your name? I don't know. Let's throw some stuff in here. What's your last name? Your phone number. Let's see. Um, your email address. Okay. Uh, So right here is your email address. Uh, let's say I'm just going to throw something in here. This is not a real email address. I'm just. So once you go here, um, next is going to ask you for your address. You're going to put in your address information. And then, you know, I don't want to fill out a bogus account, right. but on the right. particular one, you're going, to do, you're going to do personal information. Then it's going to ask you financial information. So it's going to ask you for your social security number. You have to be, um, if you don't have a social security number, you got to have an ITN if you're overseas or foreign or maybe you got a green card or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's going to ask you for your social security number, where you work, how much money you make, where's the money coming from. And they're asking you all those information to make sure no money laundering is going on. Right. right? So someone is has dirty money trying to clean their money, right? So what do you work? What's your income? How much money you have in liquid assets, those things. Then after you get through the personal information, then the financial information, boom, you have an account. Once you have the account, now it's about linking your bank account to throw your money into the bank account. Once your money is placed into your bank account, you're ready to go. Okay. So let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So I will start off with the Yahoo Finance to kind of see what I want to invest in, and then I will go ahead and do an e trade account so I can choose that company to invest. In. Is that right? You can you can have an e trade right off right off top. You know, it's nothing just because you have an e trade account. I mean, you got to buy something, right? <laughs> Robin Hood tonight or TD Ameritrade tonight. Just because you have a credit card, don't mean you got to start swiping it. You know, <laughs> you can just sit there and wait, right? You don't have to say, Oh, no, I got a credit card. I got to start. I got to find what I want, then go get the credit card. You can have an account there waiting for yeah. you ready to go and then once you are ready to once you then you're using yahoo finance to do your research but if you have an e-trade or a td ameritrade a lot of the research can be done inside of those uh, okay well. so i didn't show that because some people may not have e-trade or td ameritrade or scott trade but that's the difference and you can okay. you know and, and just to reiterate, um, Prince, um, okay. you mentioned earlier in the show, but mm -hmm. what stock apps do you recommend for beginners? Um, my personal opinion, I would say E-Trade. I like, you know, E-Trade, you get the app and you get the website. TD Ameritrade, you get the app and the website. Robinhood is quick and easy. It's fun, but um, you can't do a lot of analytical work that you or research that you would like to do. You know, like we just did on Yahoo Finance. Right. That was that simple. So that's why I'm not crazy about them. Uh, I'll be more link, more leaning to a e trade or TD Ameritrade. That's my personal take. This is nothing sponsored. That's just my personal thing that I like for you know for a beginning person. So. Okay, so e trade it is for me. <laughs> yes, I appreciate you. this. I appreciate you taking the time out. You know to talk to us, talk to some mm -hmm. beginners. You know I learned a lot tonight. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us that you think we may need to know anything at all in general? I will say this. If you're someone just know you have to do something. 
and don't become so paralyzed. Um, it don't feel like you're alone. Take me for yourself. Take me for example. I'm not a very. I always tell people I'm not a very mechanical person. You're not going to catch me in my garage changing out a muffler or rotating tires. That's just not going to happen, right? I'm going to go out and seek a professional. Um, it would be the same things. Um, it'd be the same thing if I was. Uh, if I want to go get a haircut, I'm not a barber. I'm probably going to go find a barber. So the same thing when you're in finances, if you're going through something, you feel like you can't get there. Seek out the help of a licensed professional in your area that you could potentially trust. Um, and that's what I would. That's what I would do. OK, now, is this a service you offer, Prince, um, uh, as far as advising individuals? Um, or uh, currently not, at, not at this time. I'm private. You know, I'm not open to the public. Um, but. You know, there are plenty of people out there that will do it, but, you know, it, okay. won't, be, it won't be me. So, <laughs> so, uh, but there are plenty of people that, out there. But, you know, I put out a lot of content to try to help people, um, right. you know, in the public, you know, through the podcast and the show and stuff like that. But it wouldn't be something I would go out and um, I would go out. I'm, it, it's plenty of people, wherever city you live in. If you live in a small town, go to your nearest bigger city or big town. And reach out, you know, reach out to find someone. Hey, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't like it. Make sure they're licensed and make sure they're accredited, right? Make sure they're an accredited person and make sure they're licensed. You can look up anybody's license and accreditation and make sure they're a fiduciary. Fiduciary is acting within the best interest of their client. So those are things I, you know, don't fuck you at home by yourself. E trade at law. Do I, you know what I mean? You know, don't I would that was just my personal take. I would if you because I know a lot of people that were like, man, I would love the best for the start, or it's just not making me any money. I would say, hey, seek out the help of an expert. You know, that would be something I would do. Yes, I can go on YouTube and learn how to change my mind, but I don't even trust myself. So I'm <laughs> gonna go find a mechanic that I know and trust, and I'm gonna go mm-hmm. seek out the help and advice. Same thing if it was a legal issue. Can I go online and Google and look up stuff, yes, but I would probably see the if I had a legal situation, I'd probably step of you know my attorneys. Right, absolutely. Um, Jonathan yeah. said he loved eating this food, bro. Spit and salute. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jonathan? Man, what's going on? <laughs> oh goodness. So, um, how does um everyone find your show? How are they able to tune in um to watch mm-hmm. the investor show? The Invest Show is it's a random show. Like, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people can say, oh, I'm six o'clock at night, every night at 6 p.m. Unfortunately, the Invest Show is not there at this point. It's a pretty random show. Um, but <laughs> but it is archived, meaning that anybody can go back and listen to old episodes. So, you know, we just um, branched out to Twitch. So we're on Twitch, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. You know, all podcasts and platforms. We're on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, any, any way, if you have a phone, any way you can get to podcasts or if you have YouTube, if you like the video, like to sit down and watch the video. Um, but we do do live content and the investor show is based around. And then we have the investor show TV dot com and the investor show is based around three things, which we do interviews, we do um, tutorials. And we do commentary. So commentary on what's going on in in the financial world and the markets. So if you're someone who's like to look up, uh, if you're someone who like to just know what's going on in the market, hey, what happened today? Does this make sense? You know, we do that. We do commentary. Um, with recent, recent commentary, we do in the interviews. And we have a bunch of tutorials to show you how to open up an account with Fidelity, how to open up an account with trade how to open up account with td ameritrade Robinhood. how to open up with your kids what is the etf what is the mutual fund how to buy them all on your platforms how to build portfolios what is the index fund um when you see things in the media what does that mean mean we read financial reports together um you know we keep a pulse on what's going on around the globe so um it's a pretty boring show so you should tune in (laughs) <laughs> but it's very informational. Um, like Viola said, great information. So y'all make sure y'all check out the investor show. He he goes in way more detail. You know, you'll learn, you'll definitely learn. So I'll be trying to tune in, um, Prince. Um, you mentioned interviews. Have you uh-huh. interviewed anyone that's just wowing that would be wowing uh-huh. to us that you would like uh-huh. to share? Uh over the years, we've had a lot of if you know, had a lot of NFL players, 
NBA uh, CEOs of, you know, household name companies, um, a lot of celebrities. I won't say a lot of celebrities. I mean, a lot of well-known people who do well-known things. So, yeah, you know, I w- but, you know, I will say um, uh, it all depends on what you're into, right? Um, What's your most memorable one? Which one would you say that stood out most for you out of your oh, hands? Uh, anybody that I've met, Warren Buffett, you know, hands down. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett was, you know, greatest investor of all times, you know, and uh, you know, me nobody ever topped that one, you know, especially um how that one was done. We were we uh met together. Uh, you know, we met, I've been up to his office and you know, went to dinner together, stuff like that. Um and uh yeah, he put me in the latest the latest book of his life came out last year. Uh, oh God, don't shoot me for this, but I can't think of the title. But it's Warren Buffett's book. You know, it's the latest book of his life. Came out in 2020. Um, but um, yes, that and you know, going to dinner with me, going to his office and uh him autographing um and writing notes into each one of my books and you wow. know, video okay. cameras, stuff like that. You know, so I, I can't, you know, he's 90 years old and um, you know, yeah, no, I don't nobody can I don't think I can do anything that can top that. Right, in that wow. capacity of him, but we've had uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyos, which is whose name is Robert Kiyosaki, who's famous for Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, the Cookie, Famous Amos, a very good friend of mine, uh, Famous Amos CEO, the founder of Famous Amos, um, Dare Queen CEO, the Wolf of Wall Street, the star of that movie, wow. Wolf of Wall Street has been on, I don't know, NBA players, and my latest book, my third book, I wrote it with uh, NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. He's okay. um, yeah, we wrote that book. We put the third book out. He's a character in the third book in twenty published in twenty nineteen. So yeah, him. I don't know football players, basketball players. Tyrese the singer. We just had Killer okay. Mike. Uh, Tyrese the singer's been on uh, Killer Mike. Um, he was just on uh, some politicians, some mayors, some. Uh, wow! So you just hit every angle. Boom! Boom! Bam! Yeah, I'm yeah. Right. I'm be like Prince one day. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and but the thing is, I bring them all into my world of finances. You know, uh, I don't talk about what's your new album and music. Right. You come into my world, like if you if you want. And it's been a lot of people have. It's been a lot of notable celebrities that decline me because they didn't feel comfortable talking about. This they didn't feel comfortable talking about. It. I don't talk about politics or anything. You know, yeah. I, I I just mm-hmm. stay away from that. Because some people feel like some people feel like, you know, hey, yeah, I got a new album, but I don't want to talk about my finances. But I'm like, well, that's not what this show about. Right. You know, so um, everybody I bring in, I always try to bring them into, you know, my world of finances. Oh, yeah. We had the CEO of Red Robbins, um, the CEO CEO of Red Robbins, the CEO of Dairy Queen, the CEO of uh, Acorns, Acorns, the app. Acorns are pretty uh, investing, investing them. Uh, she was the CBO. Um, I can't branding officer. Um, it's a long list. I have a you know in my uh in my basement I have a long list of majority of some of the notable notable noticeable interviews of people that I met with or people that I've done something with or whatever. Then also March 16th back in my hometown um, is Children's Financial Literacy Day. So uh, wow. Yeah, we get back in Waynesboro, Georgia, you know, that is uh, Children's Financial Literacy Day. But yes, it's a, you know, I don't want to diminish anybody to say, oh, well, this person is not. Everybody played a major role. I mean, every, you know, from every, whether they were a politician, whatever they've done in their lives, you know, they all played a major role. But, uh, you know, it's been several people, iconic, you know, interviews that we've done with, you know, a lot of people in the financial industry, all type of CEOs of companies, uh, franchise experts, people who own franchise, things like that or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate all this. I appreciate you sharing all of this information with us, coming on, taking the time out of your day um, to to come on and talk with me and, and share your knowledge. So I do appreciate that. Um, I don't want to hold you too long because, you know, I start talking and yapping and yapping, but you know, I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, Jonathan said, always a good feeling to come to work all week and come home to let's sip and talk with friends. Well, I appreciate that, Jonathan. I really do. Um, but uh, if there's nothing else you would like to share with us, we can go ahead and give each other our Friday evenings back. Again, I do appreciate this so much of you coming on.
Mm-hmm. And as we always say on Let's Sip and Talk with Freema, peace and love. All right. Thank you.